We are now going to start the video for purchasing and supply operations LO5 to 10 and we are starting with designs. I explained what design is earlier on and so we will just have to scroll down to look at the three aspects, three aspects of product and service design. And we have three aspects, okay? We have the concept, the package and the process. And which is the under, the concept is the understanding of the nature, use, and value of, of the service or product. So, concept is looking at generating ideas. So, you have to conceptualize your ideas, and that should include the nature, the use, and the value. Then we go to the package of of component products and services. The package is talking about the components of the product and services that provide those benefits of the concept that you came about it could be component it could be ingredients then we have the process defines the way in which the component products and services will be created and delivered so the process will actually look at the transformation of the input into the output so looking at the how to transform those components or ingredients to get a product or a service then we move on to we would have to move on to the stages of product and service design. This concept generation is the same as the aspect concept, which is talking about idea. You need to come up with an idea and um, the idea of the product and service service that you would want to 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 design and then you come you go on to screening that the second stage you would screen your design and then preliminary design after screening and coming up with the design, you would have to now go to the preliminary design stage where you would actually put the components together and see form of a sketch and see what you get. And then the fourth one is design, evaluation, and improvement. So you have to now evaluate your design and then if there's a need to improve, you do that before the last one, which is prototyping and final design. So these are the five stages of product and service design. We will now look at um, products, excuse me, we will look at supply network design. A supply network perspective means setting an operations in the context of all the other operations in which it interacts, um, some of which are its suppliers and customers. So we are looking at supply network design, design as in the network. So we look at three reasons. Three reasons a supply network three reasons a supply network perspective helps to make sense of competitive relationship. One, it helps an understanding of competitiveness. And that is in as much as intermediate customers and immediate customers and immediate suppliers um, are the main concern of companies, they have to go beyond that and they have to try and see um understand why customers and suppliers act as they do so you go beyond your customers and your suppliers to help you to understand their behavior and link it to the competitiveness second one is they help identify significant links in the network and then it also helps focus on long-term issues this will be the three reasons for supply network would now go down and scroll and look at location of capacity and manage capacity management so the amount of capacity an organization will have to will have to depend on its view of current and future demands so that is if the view of future demand is different from current demand that demand then this issue becomes important okay so this is what location of capacity and capacity management is about. Then we have location of operations, reasons for location decisions, and changes in demand. All these, you have to look at this. For instance, location of operations, the stimuli which act on an organization during the location decision can be divided into supply side and demand side influence. So you are looking at supply side influence, as well as demand side um, influence. Supply side influences are the factors such as labor, land, and all those stuff. And then demand side influence includes such things like uh, image of location and so on and so forth.
Then we'll look at operations layout and flow. What is a good layout? Then layout, I think you should just get the definition and look at the basic layout types. We have fix, position layout, functional layout, cell layout, and product line layout. There's another one which is not included here, mixed layout. These are the five and you need to look, know all the types of layouts and the, the details of the layouts. Right. We will now follow, we'll scroll down and I want us to look at process technology. Process technology basically is talking about machine to machine or machine technology where you know you have to allow the machine to do a lot of things without any human interactions or human assistance. So it is using technology to produce or using technology to produce and, and grant services without any human assistance. And yet it also uses the same input as in materials, information and customers. All these are done through a technological process where human assistance are not needed. Um, technology is used to process and then get an output. So that is what is the gist of it. We'll then go down to um, human job design and work organization in logistics and supply operations. So we are looking at work design, design individuals and groups jobs. We have the flexibility working behavior approaches. All these are linked to design individuals and groups jobs. These in these boxes are explained further down and I would like students to read. I've made them very simple and you can easily understand. Thank you for listening.